Okay, so chapter nine uh, is centroids. Centroid, I like to think of it as the center of something. It's technically the center of the geometry. All right, so if we are looking at 1D lines or 2D areas or 3D volumes, um, the centroid would be the center of the area. Right, most of the time we're looking at two dimensional areas. Centroid is the center of the geometry. Uh, it's also equal to the center of mass, but technically, mass is the center of, of where the mass is. The centroid is the center of where the area is. Um, they're the same if the, um, if the object is homogeneous. Homogeneous, right? Same, same object, same material, same density throughout, uh, then yes, the centroid is also the center of mass. It's also the center of gravity. Uh, it's also, so they're also the center of gravity if homogeneous and uniform gravitational field. Uniform gravitational field. So technically, um, not none of these problems, but in, in, in problems where you want to put the weight da acting down, you put the weight acting down from the center of gravity, which is usually the center of mass, which is usually the centroid, um, if you have one material that has a constant density throughout. So sometimes these are used interchangeably, but we're just looking at centroids right now, center of the geometry. And, and most of it, we're going to be looking at two-dimensional center of the area. All right, so centroids are four common shapes are known, um, and they are given to us. Um, we've got a, a formula sheet that I'll, I'll give you that shows uh, the centroids of uh, squares, rectangles, you know, circles, triangles, half circles, quarter circles. Um, so where is the center? centroid of a square or a rectangle right in the middle, right? Don't overthink that one. The centroid of a rectangle is right at the middle. The centroid of a circle is right at the middle. Uh, the centroid of a triangle is one-third closer to the taller side. One-third closer to the taller side. So if we broke this up into thirds, it would be one-third um, closer to the bottom than the top. Um, let, let's look at right triangles, though, actually. Let's talk about right triangles. Right triangles is one-third from the base and one-third, two-thirds. Um, it's one-third, right? It, it doesn't make sense that it's closer to the left than it is to the right. It doesn't make sense that it's closer to the bottom than it is uh, to the top. Right, so the centroid, the center of area of a triangle, is one-third closer to the taller side. All right. Um, there are some, um, some interesting shapes, like a quarter circle or a half circle. We can look at our formula sheet. This is 4r over 3 pi, right? And this would be r right here. This would be r right here. The centroid is at 4r over 3 pi, 4r over 3 pi from this um, bottom and the side right here. All right, but uh, we kind of need uh, to figure out uh, what if we have some weird shape that has a function right here. All right, let's see, what if we have some weird shape that has a function uh, you know, what is, uh, I don't know where this, this might be, right here. What would this X bar location and this Y bar location be? So we're going to call the centroid location X bar and Y bar if this is our X axis and Y axis. So let's uh, get an equation that we can calculate the centroid of functions. Everything else, you know, these shapes are just given to us. That's going to be the easy part. Okay, but centroids of functions. Let, let's find the x bar and the y bar. That would be the centroid of the total area. Well, we could think about this, and it really goes back to kind of almost the sum of the moments 
right? Force times moment arm of lots of individual forces. Think about our distributed loads. Force times moment arm of lots of distributed forces would be equal to one force, and where would its location be? So that, that where would its location be is what we're thinking about. So the location of the X component of the centroid of an, of an area that is given by a function, well, sorry, let's not talk about given by a function. The X bar would be the integral. Integral is really kind of like a summation of all the tiny, tiny um, di differential uh, uh, parts of it. It's the integral of X tilde dA over integral dA. The Y bar is the integral of Y tilde dA over integral of dA, where x tilde and y tilde is not the centroid of the total area, but the centroid of the differential area dA. So this dA is the differential area. Um, and so you can think about this dA as a few different things. I would even think about it as a, a rectangle whose base is dx. So I'm looking at very, very thin rectangles with a base of dx. So like here, this very, very thin, infinitesimally small area, that, that would be my dA, all right? So, and I, I would integrate it from here, right, all the way to here. All right, so let's think about this. Let's think about these infinitesimally small, very, very, very thin, skinny rectangles, and we're going to differentiate, we're going to integrate, well, yeah, so we're integrating from here to here, right, from left to right. Okay, so let's say we have a function, f of x, which is right here, and we want to find the area of, uh, we want to find the centroid of this area between the function and the x-axis. Right, we want to, we've got a function, we want to find the area between the function and the x-axis. Well, let's use our um, equation. The x-bar, the location of the centroid, the x-location of the centroid, is going to be the integral of x tilde dA over integral dA. Well, what is dA? What would this dA, let me write this in pink here, what would this area be right here if it has a base of dx? Well, what is the d area? It's a rectangle. Area of a rectangle is base times height. Base is dx. Height is the function. Height is the function. So let's maybe let's give this a, a function of x to the two thirds. So the height would be x to the th two thirds, right? Right. Y equals x to the two thirds. So this is my dA, and I'd probably switch those. I'd say x to the two thirds dx is my dA. What is my x tilde? My x tilde is the centroid of dA. Where's the centroid of dA? Where, where, where's the centroid of a rectangle? It is at the middle of the rectangle. All right. And so what would the x location be of that blue dot? Uh, it would be x. Um, you know, if, if I'm over here, my x tilde would be x. If I'm right here, my x tilde. And we're going to integrate this x from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 8. So x tilde is equal to x, and if you're doing it the way that I'm doing it with vertical thin rectangles, x tilde is always x. Y tilde is the hardest, the harder one. Y tilde is the harder one. Uh, what What is the y value of that? Well, well it would be that height. Uh, so in this case, it would be one half of x to the two thirds, right? W what about right here? Yeah, it'd still be one half of x to two thirds. What about right here? It'd still be one half of here is x to the two-thirds, you know, here is x to the two-thirds, the height would be one-half x to the two-thirds. 
is it always one half of the function? It is when you're going from the function all the way down to the zero, right, to the x-axis. If you're going, if you're looking at the area of under the function, the area to the x-axis, yes, it's always going to be one half x to the two-thirds, but I like to think of x tilde as the average of the top and bottom of the rectangle DA. Average of the top and bottom of the rectangle DA. X tilde is always X. DA is base times height. All right? So think about think about the, these, these over here. Your, your DA is always going to be base times height. Your X tilde is always going to be X if you do the, the, the way with these thin vertical rectangles. And your Y tilde is going to be the average of the top and bottom. The top is X to the two-thirds. The bottom is zero divided by two to get the average of those two values. And then you've got that. All right, so once you've got these, then we can say, okay, X bar is integral X tilde DA over integral DA. Right? This would be y bar equals integral of y tilde dA over integral dA. So we can plug this in. Sorry, let me get another sheet of paper here. So we can plug in integral of x tilde. That is x, right? dA is x to the two-thirds dx. All right? And we can divide it by, this is integral, dA, integral x to the two-thirds dx. So I think the x bar is going to be the easier one. You know, it's the integral of x times the function dx over integral of the function dx. Uh, what is that? x to the 1 times x to the 2 thirds is x to the 5 thirds. Right, that right there is x to the 5 thirds. And so the integral of x to the 5 thirds, make sure I'm doing an integral, not a derivative. Integral of x to the 5 thirds, I would add 1 to the exponent. Also, it would be x to the 8 thirds. And I would divide it by that new exponent. So the top would be x to the 8 thirds divided by 8 thirds. The bottom, add 1 to the exponent. It was 2 thirds, now it's 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds, right? I, 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 when I integrate, I add 1 to the exponent and divide it by the new exponent. And so there we go. You could, you could, you know, cross out some of these thirds. The and We've got x to the 8 thirds over x to the 5 thirds. Um, and we would evaluate it from 0 to 8. We would evaluate it from 0 to 8. Okay? Actually, before I cross out anything, um, let's not cross out anything. Let's go ahead and evaluate this from 0 to 8. Evaluate from this from 0 to 8. I'm going to get x bar is um, 96 over 19.2. Uh, and it would be 5 inches, all right? You, you'll see later why I'm doing this 19.2 because this denominator is the same denominator over here. Okay, so when I'm doing my y, so x is easier. Y is a little bit harder. All right, y tilde is not just y. It's not just x. It is 1 half x to the 2 thirds. dA is x to the 2 thirds dx. That's a that's a one half x to the four thirds. All right, divide it by now. I could redo what I have in the denominator. It's integral of x to the two thirds dx. Integrated it from zero to eight. Uh, this is still going to be nineteen point two. So I'm not going to redo that math. All right, but the integral of x to the four thirds would be x to the, what, 7 thirds divided by 7 thirds from 0 to 8 divided by 19.2. Y bar, so I plug in 8 right here, plug in 0 right here, divide by 
9.2. Y bar for this case would be 1.43. So my centroid, my X bar, Y bar is 5 comma 1.43 uh, units are inches. See if that makes sense. So you, this is 8. My centroid is going to be over here at 5. This is, uh, I don't know, I, I could figure out what that is, x to the 2 thirds, uh, 2, 4, I guess. The height here would be 4. Um, the centroid would be right about here at 5, comma, 1.43 inches. All right, but let's step back and look at, look at what we did. The centroid of a function is integral x tilde dA over integral dA. The y bar is integral y tilde dA over integral dA. So sketch yourself a dA and ask yourself, what is my dA? It's base times height. Base is dx. Height is the value of the function. Um, the x tilde is just going to be x if you're doing it this way that I'm doing. Y tilde is the average of the top and bottom, right? Y tilde is, is the location of the centroid of the differential area, dA. So it's average of top and bottom, or in this case, one-half x to the two-thirds. And then you just plug in plug in your x tilde, plug in your dA, plug in your dA, plug in your y tilde, plug in your dA, plug in your dA, and do the integral. Do the math, all right? I'm going to always do this vertical dx. You could think about this. Uh, what if we had said our dA was a horizontal rectangle and we were integrating it from y going from 0 to, in this case, I guess 4? Uh, you could do some problems that way. Some problems, it might actually be easier to do a horizontal differential element dA. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to, any anytime I can, I'm just going to try to do this vertical dA that has a very thin base of dx. All right, so know this, right? X bar is integral X tilde dA over integral dA. Y bar is integral Y tilde dA over integral dA. All right?